Hey guys, so here's a video on how I do my stencils. I do them two ways. I do them with aluminum uh, and I do them on PCB board as well. So here's uh, one with aluminum, that's for the Yamaha R3 uh, quick shifter. This is the stencil for part placement, just to make sure it's aligned and easier to place. Uh, the blue one is also an aluminum stencil. Uh, it just didn't remove the form of resist because I didn't feel like it. So you can see this ones are a little bit clogged from uh, usage because it has dry uh, southern face. And this is the PCB board. You know, I, I, I really don't have any preference between the two other than the chemical part, but uh, when I do my projects, it's really, it really all depends on what, what I feel like doing at the moment. So I'll either do PCB or uh, uh, aluminum. They're, both of them are pretty easy. So for the PCB, what is it that we need? So we are going to need, uh, uh, or at least what I'm using, it's an end mill, uh, 0.25 millimeter end mill. This is the only reliable one that I found for cutting uh, really small. Uh, unfortunately, it's a bold, uh, bold radius end mills. Uh, I, I haven't been able to find a flat one strong enough uh, to cut. So by being bold, that means that we need to cut a little deeper to make sure it punches through. And the board we're gonna be using is this one, this, uh, the side, the depth, the thickness is 0 0.017 or 0.43 millimeters. Uh, for the aluminum one, this is what I use is 0 0.016 inches, which is 0.43 millimeters as well for something close to that. Either of the two, we're doing this today. And uh, the, <clears throat> let's see. So what do we do next? So the first step is we wanna we wanna uh, export the Gerber files for this, so we can process them. So first step is oh by the way we, I have this just for reference. So let me open that. <clears throat> so this is the smallest path we have on this layout. And this one is, let me change it to millimeters. It's 0 0.6 mil, uh, millimeters. So that's that's how much room we have to work with, with the smallest path we have. So we have to make sure that the tool fits. Obviously the tool is 0 0.25 millimeters. Uh, it's one millimeter less than what we need. And we want to be able to do circles inside to cut correctly. So let's, uh, let me close this, go back to this one. We are going to process the Gerber file. Um, I'm not selecting anything, just taking the defaults. We're gonna process the job and it's gonna output to this location manufacturer, which is right here, All right? So we're just gonna press enter. There's the, the folder, we are done. Uh, we go to flat cam, open the Gerber file. We're going to be using this one, solder paste top. I'm going to bring it in and drop it. Change the color so we can see it better. All right, so let's go to this one so we can see what we have, right? Each of these squares represents 0.1 millimeters, and there's six squares uh, from top to bottom. That we have to play with, which means that we need uh, 1.5 millimeters of clearance on on either either end, on all sides of the square. So it is to the the machining part has to be somewhere around here, right, and go in circles. So to do that, we're gonna click on on the Gerber file. We go to Tools, Paint Tool. Uh, I'm going to leave the diameter at 0.3 because it's, it's a V taper tool. So the deeper you go, the wider is going to be, we're not going to go that deep. Uh, so three is more than enough to give us a 0.05 millimeters of clearance. 
we're going to specify the overlap to be 50% and we're going to generate the geometry and you'll see that those red circles inside that's the path for the tool as it's going to be cutting and you can see that we have one a little more than 1.5 millimeters of clearance on each end since each square actually 1.5 because it's not exactly here so uh, you can see that um, the uh, each of the squares is 0.1 millimeters so this one is just above and this one is just above median uh, the mid side uh, midpoint so the next step is to a project this is the new file we created or the new geometry so we double click on that one and we want to focus on this this is the depth of cut that we're going to be doing on, on the pcb board and we know the pcb board is 0 0.043 millimeters so we need to cut more than that to be able to cut all the way through and the way we accomplish that since this is grayed out we play with these two numbers we can either lower the tip of the diameter right it, it's a little too much there it's going to be cutting a lot on the top so we're going to use this obviously you can use 0, 0.0 something but it's a lot easier to just do it with this so that's the the actual thickness of the board we need more than that that's not enough uh, my cuts are always at 46 but for this demo i'm just going to go to the next one four seven so that's, that should be more than enough to cut all the way through to the bottom through the bottom copper uh we're only going to change the fit rate on on z to 200 just so it doesn't take forever for the tool to go down uh, and we're going to leave the rest the same we're going to leave it really slow so you know for small ones it just takes its time to cut all the way through uh, this is just uh, for my machine to when it ends to be at 38 and 0 that 0 there are no tool changes so that's it we're done we're gonna generate the CNC Java object and you're just gonna see it painted in blue that's the path of the uh, what it's gonna be doing and actually uh, I forgot to do something this is incorrect so we're gonna delete this one this right here we're gonna go back to this one and it's already in 47 so it remembers the last changes and we're gonna do multi depth of cut and we're gonna do three cuts so we're gonna do 0.2 on each cut so it's gonna do 0 0.2 0 0.2 and then 0 0.7 0 0.07 everything remains the same generate that again there it is all right, you can see it's cutting corners. Obviously, can do sharp corners on CNC. We are going to save the before we save the file. Let me go here. So we're going to save the file. This is my original files. This is what I did yesterday, actually this morning. Yeah, they, that this. Yeah, this is the same one. <clears throat> so we are going to save it here and we're going to call it new stencil demo right there it is <clears throat> here's the new stencil demo and, and obviously this one has another one open so let's uh let's just say new and then drop it in there it is. So <clears throat> if you look closely, there's one, two, three cuts that are being done on each of the pads, uh, including this one, even though I just placed that one for reference. Um, so there's, this is video of what I was doing uh, this morning. And obviously the that is real time by the way uh, I'm cutting really slow and uh, the video is choppy because I'm recording and doing a lot of stuff on the same computer but you can see uh, you should be able to see on this one here uh, that the copper at the bottom is still there is being pushed down oh especially on this one so 
once it's done I do sanding on the bottom and on the top and then the, that gets rid of it and that prevents me from cutting too much at the top and let me go to so that's the smallest path that's a regulator it has three paths that's it done with it obviously the bigger ones require more surface area that's a three uh, six or three capacitor and I believe that was the last yeah that was the last one So that's what it looks like on the other, oh, let me see the other side. So that's the other side. You can see the copper being pushed down and I just sand it and it gets rid of it. You can cut deeper and so you don't have to do that, but that's just my preference since I always sand it anyways and that keeps it flush uh, with the right dimensions, right? So that board you're seeing there is this one here. <clears throat> Pretty simple. So that's the process. Uh, any questions, let me know. Enjoy.